Hey folks, welcome to my channel. I really appreciate you stopping in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, for future videos. I think you'll enjoy these. Today we're gonna talk about grass and how to get a healthy lawn. Uh, when we think about healthy lawns, we often think about fertilizer, uh, we think about water, but we don't often think about the condition of our soil. And what's our grass growing in? Is our soil too acidic or is it too alkaline? Oftentimes we do need to add some amendments to our soil to make it more conducive to a healthy soil. One of the ways you find that out is by sending a soil sample to your cooperative extension agents and they can tell you what your soil type of your yard is. Uh, here in North Carolina, my soil is acidic, so I add lime, and that lime allows the nutrients, it brings the pH of the soil up and allows the, the turf to, to uptake nutrients to make it a healthy soil. Now, one key factor that we forget about when it comes to healthy soil is, is our soil compacted. And compaction is a, is a major factor in a healthy lawn. We compact our soil by, by driving our mower on it, by walking on it, and even rain compacts our soil. And it's basically where your soil, the particles in your soil are, are pressed in and compacted together, making it very difficult for your roots to uptake water and nutrients. Uh, it makes it difficult for microorganisms to work and for earthworms to work. And so you need to open up that soil and, and loosen it up to reduce the compaction in your soil. And that's one of the reasons that aeration is so important. Aeration is not just sticking little spikes into the ground and poking little holes in it. Good aeration, what golf courses tend to use, is, is core aeration, where they're actually using uh, machines with tines, with hollow tines that stick into the ground and pull little plugs, inch and a half to two inches, out of the ground and drops those plugs right on top of the turf. And initially it looks a little ugly, but those, those little plugs break down and it, it helps the microbes, microbial activity in your soil. The holes that it leaves, leaves uh, space for the roots to, to begin to open up and for water to penetrate into the soil layer, as well as organic matter like your grass clippings to fall down into the holes and to begin to break down by micro, microorganisms and worms and uh, just creates a very, very beneficial environment for your soil. So core aeration is what you're looking for. And I invested in a core aerator a few years ago because of how difficult my soil is. Very, very hard in the summertime. It turns on to almost like concrete in a dry summer. And so I wanted to improve the soil and I invested in a pull behind core aerator. Again, you can rent aerators, core aerators from um, your rental companies that are that have a motor on them or you can hire someone to do core aeration if you like but I core aerate my lawn about once a year sometimes twice a year if, if I have uh, the conditions for it but I do it in the late spring and uh, and I've also done it again this year uh, in the summer and I'm gonna show you how that looks so let's go take a look okay so this is my craftsman core aerator and I actually don't know if they still make this with Craftsman, but I know there are other brands uh, that are exactly the same thing. So this is pulled behind my Cub Cadet and show you how this thing works. So your grass needs to breathe. And so this is actually a, a core aerator and you've seen other types I'm sure that just have little spikes. Well, what makes this different is this actually pulls plugs out of the soil as it's rotating around pull, being pulled by your tractor and it actually pulls out little plugs and I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. Now this is pulled behind my tractor just have a basic uh, tractor pin here and you have a lever right here that you um, raise and lower the, the, the deck and that allows the tires here to lift up and everything is driven now off of these tines. And these tines are what digs down into the ground and pulls out little plugs as you're going along. So I've basically got four center blocks up here for weight and they're perfect size for center blocks. But you can use other types of weights if you 
bags of sand or whatever. But the more weight you have on this thing, the better you're gonna get depth down into your soil with your plugs. So the, ba the way this works, now I've got this lowered, and as you can see, the tines are ready to move. The wheels have moved up. for the core aerator to do is to pull these little core plugs and leave holes and as you can see how deep my finger goes down in there that's pulled out by that by that core aerator and that's a beautiful sight that's what we want right there and so I do this about twice a year I do it in the spring uh, late spring early summer right after we've had some really good rain uh, so that the soil is nice and moist and soft but uh that's the best time to do this and unusually in the summertime i'm not able to do this because usually our soil is really hard and compacted and uh we don't have a a lot of heavy rain but we've had a tropical storm recently as well as um quite a bit of rain since then too so I thought it was an ideal time to be able to, to sneak in a core air core aeration uh, this year in this lawn so, so that's what we're looking for we want to pull out as much of that compacted soil as possible and the more I can run over this lawn the more holes I can punch in the lawn the better the soil is going to be over time that's what I'm trying to do, that's what I'm aiming to do. This right here is what we're aiming for. This is not fescue, this is not bluegrass. This is compadre zoysia, cut at two and a half inches. And that's what we're aiming for right there. <laughs> 